Hello, I'm Matthew David Hurtado, and I'm the host of the Natural Health Report. And today, there's someone really interesting that we're going to talk to because Katrina, is it Starzinski? Starzinskaya. Starzinskaya, okay. She developed Lyme's disease in 2009. And most people, when they get Lyme's disease, I was one of these people, it devastates your life and it completely ruins all of your hopes and dreams and it puts you on the sideline for either the majority of your life or for your entire life. But there is hope and Katrina is living proof of that. And three and a half years later, she overcame her Lyme's disease. She's a best-selling author and she's also a qualified mentor in the realm of health and nutrition and wellness. So I want to welcome Katrina onto the call. Thank you so much, Matthew. How are you? I'm great. I'm glad you're here because Lyme's disease is is horrible. I've had it and you know you've been there and most people lose hope. So where do we begin mm -hmm. with this Lyme's disease topic? What would you like to start and, and give people right away? Definitely. Uh, before we start, I think I can hear some echoes. So just to make sure the sound is great. Mm. When I speak, I, I hear a little bit of echo. Oh, you hear a little bit of echo? Okay. Yeah. Now it's, now it's good. Now it's okay? Perfect, yes. Okay. Yeah, so um, probably I will start with my story, the way I was, I became sick and diagnosed, so people know a little bit of my background. Um, I was really healthy before I got sick, I was into healthy lifestyle, uh, vegetarian, doing uh, juice cleanses, and one day I woke up extremely sick overnight. Half of my face was paralyzed and half of my body was numb. I was in excruciating pain and I ended up in the emergency room and uh, doctors basically sent me home with an idiopathic condition, meaning no known cause and no cure. And uh, then I went to many other doctors and they told me nothing was wrong with me. They couldn't figure out what was going on. And the similar story, many doctors told me it was all in my head. All my lab tests came back normal. And uh, about a uh, few months later, I became even more sick and I was taken by ambulance into emergency room. And uh, there they did maybe 20 different tests. Everything came back normal and then they were about to release me home when not even a doctor, a resident, told me I should uh, test for Lyme disease. So at that moment I was so happy because finally I knew what was wrong with me and finally I knew I was not crazy. But mm. when I got home and Googled Lyme, I knew I had a long road ahead of me. And I think the scary part is that some people w were talking about their Lyme uh, LLMDs and they would say, well, my LLMD also has Lyme disease and their kids have Lyme disease, so I can trust them because they know what they're doing. And I was so terrified. I thought, oh my gosh, if a medical doctor can't heal themselves, I mean, how are they going to help me? So uh, that, that was the beginning of my journey. And uh, uh, then I went to see my first uh, Lyme literate medical doctor. And uh, they told me, well, you will, it will take a long time. You have to start like on five different antibiotics. And then if it doesn't work, we'll do more. And then if it doesn't work, we'll put you on IVs. So I started off as almost everybody else on doxycycline for a few months. And I was getting worse and worse. And uh, when I came back to see my doctor, he told me, well, let's start on IVs and try five different uh, drugs. That day I decided uh, that would not be my uh, healing journey. I would have to take full responsibility and figure out what I can do for myself. Um, natural route and um, I started doing my research and trying all kinds of natural treatments. That's great. So can you explain to me, because I was one of these um, patients and I was on doxycycline, tetracycline uh -huh. and other things for almost two years. and. It was horrible because that completely destroys your immune system in, in yeah. your gut flora. So what is a Lyme literate medical doctor? What, what, what does that mean to you? So there's a doctor that specializes in Lyme disease and uh, basically uh, those doctors, they do not tell you you are crazy, there's nothing wrong with you. Even if your blood tests come back negative, they still can diagnose you based on your symptoms and actually Lyme disease 
is diagnosed based on your symptoms because tests are so unreliable. I think there are 50% false negative or false positive. So people should not rely on blood tests. And uh, those doctors, they have special protocols developed specifically to treat Lyme disease. They don't see any other patients, only specializing in Lyme disease. Okay. I'm glad you explained that because um, I know many people don't understand. They go to the regular doctors. I did that myself. And they put me on anti-anxiety drugs for a long time, and I didn't want to take them because I said I'm not anxious. There's something else wrong. And like you, my deterioration happened very fast, and within six months, I had lost over 30 pounds, and I was shaking all the time, and I, was, I wasn't able to eat much in my brain. I couldn't think. I couldn't speak. So this was a rapid deteriorating issue. So how did you handle the fear that comes up so that you, 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 you can't, became very empowered pretty quick? Um, is that something you've always done? Have you always just had a natural, positive outlook at, on life? Great question. I think actually I, it was completely opposite, and I think that's why I got sick because, as I told you, I was uh, I was eating healthy, exercising, doing yoga. So basically, I thought I was healthy, but um, I still got sick. And there are so many people get bitten by a tick, and they don't get sick, so their immune system is much stronger. And I think the reason I got sick because I used to live in New York City, and it was. Um, uh, very loud every day so a lot of pollution and the stress and I was not that happy I was not a positive person I was constantly in the survival mode trying to make it in New York so um, I was not that empowered it just I had to make a decision either I change my life completely and become a new person or I would be sick and tired and depressed for the rest of, for the rest of my life so I, it, it was a conscious decision and I knew that um, first, uh, you know, I, I make a decision in my head and then my body would follow. Mm -hmm. And it was not overnight, of course, it was a long journey, but uh, um, it, was, it, it was just a lot of work on myself, on my mental attitude, and that's how I became a more positive person. Okay, I know it's how easy. How about to... you? <laughs> well, you know, I was very negative for the first two years because mm -hmm. I was in my bed all the time and I didn't, I didn't think there was a way out of it. I thought the end mm -hmm. was in sight, but, um, I think I discovered some similar things that you did. So let's talk about the positive spin on this. What was the first thing that happened in your life that gave you a little bit of hope? Awesome. So, um, first thing was to, uh, realize that there are so many actually negative and skeptic people online because we all start googling right away and finding you know stories what's going on and there are 90 percent of negative people that are saying i've been sick for 10 or 20 years and i tried everything nothing works so of course that's gonna make you depressed and mm -hmm. you have to look for people that heal themselves and it's much harder because those people moved on with their lives like i don't go to those forums anymore for many years because i don't like i moved on with my life so it's very important to find role models, find those who heal themselves. And actually that was my one of my secrets. I found people that healed themselves from any kind of incurable illness, AIDS, cancer, MS, Alzheimer's, Lyme disease. And I interviewed them and I found the same pattern. They had the same uh, lifestyle changes, treatments, positive attitude. So I started modeling, modeling them and I kept what worked for me. And then I got rid of what didn't work for me. So that was basically the first step, model them. And I think um, I, I would still get depressed and uh, disempowered when I would relapse and I thought, you know, it would just be always like that. I would never be healthy again. My main breakthrough was at um, Tony Robbins seminar, actually. Mm. <laughs> My first seminar, um, I went there, I was pretty sick and uh, first night when we do firewalk, um, I thought to myself, I mean, that, that's impossible. Your cooking uh, stove is like 600 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit yeah. and if you walk on those hot coals that are 2000 degrees mm. and if your body doesn't burn itself it means your mind is so powerful that it can control everything so uh, that was my decision I couldn't I didn't know if I would be able to walk and not burn myself but I, I thought 
if my mind is able to control my body and I walk and I don't burn my feet, it means that uh, my body is able to heal my to heal itself. So when I walked on those calls and on the other side of the of my walk, um, I already knew that I would be able to heal myself. It's gonna take some time, but I had hundred percent confidence and faith that uh, I will be healed. That is cool. I have never done the fire walk, but I've always mm -hmm. wanted to. So that was a that's a transformation that took place. You actually changed your state of being. Yes. You, you decided, you know, when when human beings make a decision, then the whole universe shifts to conspire to that decision. You actually made yes. a clear cut decision, like Tony Robbins would say, and and then everything sort of followed from that. Is that what happened? Exactly. And yeah. also, you just mentioned the great quotes when you. When you make a decision, the whole universe conspires to help you achieve it. So that was one of the quotes I had uh, in my bedroom, and I had a few mm. more quotes, um, something like, your body is able to heal itself if given proper stimulus, and Lyme disease is no exception. So don't uh, ever get discouraged that something is incurable, get empowered, get well. That was one of the quotes I kept in my bedroom, in my house, and every time I relapse or I feel depressed, I would read those affirmations out loud, go read more inspiring stories, and that way I would, I would change my state because I had a few moments when I got very discouraged and disempowered, but it's all a matter of changing your state back into more positive mode. Yeah, I experienced the same thing where I started to get better for a while and then you know, stress would kind of wear you down and then the negativity would come in from the outer world to your inner world and once you let that in, then the symptoms would start coming back and then the mind would try to say, oh no, that was all fake, we're not going to get well. But then you just go back to what you did the first time and you start to crawl back out of that hole again. Yes. Yeah, and look at you today. I mean, I just have to say, I'm I'm looking at you in the screen, and you look like a like a five year old magical child. Like you exude <laughs> perfect health and well being and creativity. So you've done Thank it. You. You've you've successfully conquered this thing. So you took the fire walk, and you knew that this was going to happen. You knew you're going to get well. Mm -hmm. So then, what started to happen? Then, you know, tell me about how your strength you got your strength developing, and how you started to get well again so you could be back in the gym like you are today and live live a powerful life uh, definitely so i uh, actually i was back in the gym uh, i think my my biggest biggest um, break from the gym was 32 days from the day i woke up like partially paralyzed to when my body started uh, working again mm -hmm. it, it took me like 32 days and then i went back to the gym even if i was tired or I could not do something. I knew that I have to push my body. I have to do something. And that's my advice for other people. If they are extremely tired and have fatigue, they still should go for a walk or stretch. Do something because if you don't move your body and if you just lay down in bed all day, it's not going to promote your healing. So I was, I was really pushing myself. Even healthy people push themselves to go to the gym. So yeah. it's not easy. But uh, uh, again, it's, all, it's mind over matter. And it's a great question about uh, working out because I found that um, hot yoga was one of the, I think, one of the main modalities that helped me heal. Because after I made my research, um, I was really impressed that people with AIDS or terminal cancer were healed by hypothermia. So they would go into extremely hot sauna and uh, when you increase your body temperature, it kills all the bugs, all the foreign invaders. Basically, it's like an artificial fever. That's why we get fever when we get sick. Yeah. Our body is healing itself. So I decided I'm going to create an artificial fever every single day to help my body. And also, when you sweat so much, you detox. And it's so important for people uh, struggling with Lyme because we have so many uh, neurotoxins and all our symptoms are basically caused by the toxins. So it's a great, uh, great modality to help healing, uh, go to sauna and do hot yoga. That was one of my main uh, modalities. Yeah, and I want to back up what you said because mm -hmm. when I was really sick and I was bedridden, I never gave up. It, you know, there were days that I could only do a few push-ups. I did those every single day no matter what, even if that's all I could do. And then I started walking around the block because that's all I could do. And then eventually I started carrying my son in a backpack and walking him around the park. 
And then today, you know, I'm back to full strength and full recovery. It's been four and a half, almost five, five years now. So, but what I want to say is that, like you said, you have to keep that focus and you obviously did that. And you, I called you two and a half years ago. I remember, cause I was still, you know, in my process, I was 80% well, I wanted the rest of it. And I remember you told me about the, um, the hot sauna and, mm-hmm. Uh, the steam room, whatever, the hot saunas. And I said, okay, I started doing that. And I also bought a uh, biomat, one of those uh, biomats and, and infrared mm-hmm. sauna. And those actually helped me quite a bit. So it's it's really good stuff. Awesome. Yeah. And of course, it's really important to have a healthy diet. If people, you know, eat junk food, uh, no, matter how, no matter how many antibiotics they take, if you lead a very unhealthy lifestyle, going to be very hard and long journey to recover from any kind of disease so it's important healthy diet yeah now a healthy diet what does that mean to you katrina well for me healthy diet was uh, and still is plant-based um sugar-free and i'm not perfect i am really addicted to sugar so for me (laughs) i have to make sure i don't have anything in the house otherwise i would be binging on sugar all the time so yeah yeah, plant-based organic and plant-based might not work for everybody for some people if they absolutely uh, need to eat uh, meat and all kinds of animal proteins I think it's okay but as long as we eliminate dairy because dairy is really creates a lot of inflammation Mm -hmm. Um, I uh, like for right now I don't have any allergies or uh, health issues, so I'm okay with gluten and soy and anything like that, even though I try not to eat it. But when you're sick with Lyme disease, it's crucial to eliminate gluten, soy, casein, make sure you uh, eliminate all kinds of inflammation from your body. So, yes, yeah, I, and mm-hmm. it, make sure it's organic and non GMO, of course. Yes, and I did the same thing for my first year and a half while I was when I was really really sick I had to switch to that that diet as well I went plant-based organic raw and I made sure that um, I spent the money I had I put it into the food because that was the best option I could think of and I want to also add um, before that before I worked with somebody that really knew what they were doing I was spending about eight hundred dollars a month on a lot of vitamins and supplements and most of the vitamins and supplements on the market are actually toxic and yeah. they didn't work for me. So you got to really do your due diligence when you're looking into things. And the best place to start, I, I agree with you, is the plant-based organic diet. You know, nature can be your medicine. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's talk about modalities because there's a sure. lot of modalities out there. What are some of the things that really kind of put the puzzle together for you? Of course. And before I mention modalities, I love the point you just mentioned. You spend like eight hundred dollars only on supplements, yeah. and many people would say, "Well, I'm so sick, I'm bedridden, I have no money." So for me, it's not even possible. And I think this is like one of the biggest uh, roadblocks for people. And uh, I always say that I came to this country by myself. I have. I have no family here and when I got sick also I lost my job, I was in medical school so I had to open up every possible credit card to pay for my treatments yeah. because again it's a decision either you, you go in debt and you heal yourself or you live miserable lifestyle sick and tired for the rest of your life so everything costs money but you can't really put a price on your health and I've done uh, several treatments that I think are uh, that helped me a lot and uh, they were not cheap. So one of the treatments, uh, hydrogen peroxide IVs, um, I, I felt instantly much better because it, it oxygenates my body, it detoxifies. Um, also, I was doing uh, um, frequency healing. It's similar to Rife Machine. I did Rife Machine too. I'm not sure if it was working for me or not, but I was doing uh, biofeedback machines like Ondamed and uh, I also felt a huge difference and it was it was pretty expensive so I didn't do a lot of treatments but I felt a huge difference. Yeah. Um, for those people that are completely um, opposed to spending any money I think even um, again like uh, going to sauna and uh, healthy lifestyle being positive helps even more than uh, treatments. 
I've done a lot of herbal supplements, everything uh, possible, like samento and Chinese herbs and uh, nutraceuticals, um, every possible herb that can kill bugs. Um, it's hard to know which one works. I think you, maybe you, you're the same way. You were taking everything. Yeah. Because I was so desperate. I was taking everything. I didn't yeah. know what was working. Something was working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you don't want to yeah. miss out on anything if it is working. So you keep taking and taking. But I did the same thing you did. I actually, I, we, we maxed out every credit card. And we ended up bankrupting and losing everything. But see, I had the same thought as you. I said, look. I got to go all in because if I don't get well, we'll never be successful. We'll never have anything because if I'm sitting in this bed, we're screwed. And mm -hmm. so I went all in and it was right after the bankruptcy. We, we First we bankrupted, lost everything. But then right after that, I started to figure some things out and build companies that have done millions of dollars in sales because there is hope on the other side. But you have to believe in yourself and you have to keep, you have, you have to just put yourself first, honestly. Definitely, yes. So, now you did, did you want to talk about ACT? Do you want to bring up some of that? Sure, sure. So, yeah. um, actually I was really skeptical about advanced cell training and when I just got sick and I started Googling all kinds of treatments, um, I saw online advanced cell training and I ordered the kit and I think that kit was about for about a year and a half in my house. I didn't really watch it, or maybe I watched and I thought, oh my gosh, that, that's a scam, you know, I don't know what is this. Yeah. So, I, I started doing ACT about a year and a half after I got sick, and uh, um, again, I, I was uh, seeing improvements, and I was doing all other treatments as well, yeah. so it's so hard to know exactly what was working. Uh, however, I do believe advanced cell training works magic because it was not just me. We had like 40 people in our class and because we journal our symptoms. So every single person would uh, report next week that their symptoms went down. And every single week, 40 of us were getting better and better. So I knew that it's uh, something is working, even if it's a placebo effect, even, uh, you know, if it's... Uh, um, Maybe I am thinking that advanced cell training working. Maybe something else. I didn't care as long as something was working. I was happy. So, I I highly recommend uh, to listeners to try out advanced cell training because I still don't understand how it works, yeah. but I do believe it works because thousands of people report that they were healed from Lyme disease after many years of trying all other treatments. And I would like to know your experience, actually, Matthew. Well, I, I agree with you. I, um, I ordered the kit and I got the free information and I, I actually carried the magazine around with me everywhere I went 24 hours a day for about three months. And then finally I spoke with Gary and I got in and I was think I think it was class number 30 or 31 in our group, uh, group number 30. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I, it took me about four to five weeks before I started to notice anything like significant, but then the symptoms started to go down and then they came back up again and then they went back down and I was in for 19 weeks. And then, um, uh, I think I had reached a point where I was well enough that I start, I just wanted to go. I just wanted to do my life. So I, I went and I started working again and I dropped out of the class, but I did go back and finish after about a year of being out of the class. I, I went back mm -hmm. and tidied up, but I do want to say, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about really doing this right and getting well, I also had health mentors and they were exceptional and they're not cheap because the people that really know what they're doing, their time is valuable. And, you know, I put my money into those people because I think it was like your scenario where the group that I had with advanced cell training was so important and the, and it did work. I don't know how it works either. I thought it was ridiculous, but it actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it was, the, it was the whole thing. It was the people I worked with. I found out the right products that worked for me and the puzzle came together and, you know, I just never mm -hmm. gave up. And so that's that's the secret. Just never give up and always be willing to try something new in my world. Definitely. And that's great that you mentioned mentors because I actually was so blown away with the results of advanced cell training that I I called Gary and I said, listen, I want to meet you. And he said, I'm booked up for the rest of the year. And I was like, I don't care. I'm in San Diego. 
Yeah. I'm gonna fly out to Boston and drive to Rhode Island and see you. And um, we had like 85 degrees here in San Diego. I think it was February, and mm. I flew out to Boston. It was snowing, snowstorm, and I was. It was freezing. I rented the car and I drove to see Gary, and. Um, I knew that he was a real deal. He had a private session with me and I felt uh, results. And then I flew f two more times from San Diego to Boston just for one hour private session because I believed in him so much. Welcome back. We had a quick break, unfortunately, just a little temporary outage here. So we're back. And Katrina was just saying about um, having a mentor and she went out and visited Gary. Do you want to pick up where we left off, Katrina? Absolutely, Matthew. So, yeah, definitely. I was so impressed with advanced cell training and with Gary Plyer. I knew he was a real deal and uh, I was really interested in meeting him in person and get his private uh, coaching and sessions and, and uh, mentorship because it was so crucial on, for me on my way to recovery. So I flew from San Diego to Boston twice just to spend one hour with him and um, I was really impressed with the results I saw from the private coaching and uh, I highly recommend to everybody seek out mentors and people that really can help them because it's so important to stay empowered and positive versus uh, just trying to use uh, Dr. Google and find all kinds of negative stories online. It's, it's going to hold you back. That's true. Yeah, and, and Limes is so is is so devastating that I don't think I would have made it without the mentors I had. I had Gary and I had a couple other people in my corner that were exceptional. And they weren't cheap, but I'll tell you what, they worked and that's all that mattered. I got myself well. And because Limes is like if you have a flame burning, like somebody that's overcome this thing like you have and I have, you know, you, you take somebody who doesn't believe and you put them up to the flame, they're going to start burning too. Your certainty that you can overcome this is going to trump the doubt that they've been playing in their head over and over and over from all those negative people on the internet because it's a, it's a very, um, it's very hopeless. That's the emotion. You start to feel hopeless when you get mm -hmm. immersed with all the wrong people and they tell you that this you'll never get over it. Uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to live with it for the rest of your life and, and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And who, who wants to live in that state? Nobody does. So I agree. You get a mentor and then you decide to only focus on where you want to go and listen to the people who know how to get past the issue. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, don't take away from your medical doctor as a disclaimer. Don't ever, you know, replace your mm -hmm. medical doctor because it's important. And uh, other than that, you know, move on to somebody that can help you as well. Absolutely. And I, I think uh, most of my clients I used to work with, the first issue was to overcome their doubts and install faith in their heads because all of them were saying, well, we read your story online and you said you were so healthy, you were vegetarian, and I'm not so healthy. So will I ever be able to recover? And I had to work so hard to install that state of certainty in their heads in order for them to take action and actually recover themselves. Because if, they, if you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to take action and do all, the, all, all of those treatments. That's true. And I know that fear is the fountain of disease. Whenever you have fear of a disease, it's very unlikely that you're going to see the solution and the way out because you're so entrenched in the problem. So when you're focused on the problem, that's what you get is you get the problem. You have to get outside of the problem to the solution. And that's what a good mentor does is they, they help pull you outside of the problem so you can be the solution to that problem. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, yeah. And I've spoke with you um, in regards to this. Uh, and I, if I were in the position, I would definitely work with you. And I'm one of the ones that actually got to get through this too as well. So anything else that you want to talk about? Because I know a lot of people out there, they're still going to be thinking if they have lines, they're going to still think, well, you know, Katrina, you know, she's a best-selling author. You know, she's, she's a motivated person. I'm not motivated. I haven't done anything with my life, so I'm screwed. That's, you know, they're going to think like that because yes. they're going to say, oh, she's, 
she's pretty, she's motivated, she's from another country, she's not a lazy American like us, you know, they're going to have all these doubts in their head. So what would you mm -hmm. tell somebody like that right now that's listening to this that thinks, I, I'm not, I just don't know, mm -hmm. you haven't sold me yet? <laughs> a great question. Yeah. So first off, I was not that motivated again before I got sick. All the motivation came after I healed myself because I already installed that uh, that software in my mindset that anything is really possible and I still go through a lot of ups and downs however I don't let fear take over my life and uh, I think the first step is to again find people and stories books uh, online offline and read those stories that will encourage you and empower you there are so many healing stories. I remember uh, there is a book, Ra Roger's Recovery from AIDS, and that story in uh, inspired me so much because a man was diagnosed with terminal AIDS, and he was given four weeks to live, and he completely changed his diet. He went on a juice fast. He was using uh, sun therapy, so basically he was sunbathing for an hour a day. And there is a misconception. People think that sun causes cancer, but usually, I mean, I mean um, um, sun is created by nature, by God. Mm -hmm. So it's a healing tool. It doesn't really cause cancer. It, it heals you. So <clears throat> there are so many books and stories to study and follow and model those people and uh, anybody can recover this because our bodies are such a miraculous machine capable of feats that scientists don't even understand. As long as you give it proper stimulus and stay positive, it's, it's not an overnight cure, but slowly your body will restore itself and heal itself. Yeah, and it is not an overnight cure. It, you said it took you several years. It took me yes. about, well, it's been five years since I first really got sick but today I believe I'm at 99.9% .9 well I'm stronger than I've ever been I'm healthier than I was in the last 10 years even before I got the illness but it's not just life itself is never going to be easy so you always have to what you said reach out for somebody that has the answers the right answers and you have to put faith in that person because they've done it they know what they're doing and you have to follow only the advice of people that are successful I've met people and I get a lot of people that have limes that come and they ask about what what'd you do and I say I tell them what I did and I always bring up the ACT because we talked about that and I you would yes. be surprised I've had so many people say ah, I don't want to do that and I'd say well why wouldn't you at least try they said I, I heard I heard it was a scam and I say well, you heard it was a scam from who? From somebody else who never did it or they were still sick? Well, somebody exactly. somebody didn't get well. And I'd say there is no such thing out there that's going to get everybody well. Everybody's got a unique puzzle to put together. So, Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a great point that you model and keep whatever works for you and modify. If something doesn't work, just move on to the next thing. Yeah. And... Let's talk about, okay, what is it worth on the other side, Katrina? Like, how, how do you feel right now? Oh, it's unexplainable, and uh, I'm so happy to have my energy back, and uh, I even forgot what brain fog means, because I remember it was so frustrating. You can't really control your body. You can't control your life. You, you make plans, and then in next moment, you have such a bad brain fog and fatigue and pains that you are not able to do anything. So I celebrate every single day and I think that disease was meant to be for me because again, I was not that, that humble, I didn't appreciate my life and um, I wasn't that bad race. So waking up unhappy and stressful, going to bed unhappy and stressful. And now, even if something happens, um, something goes wrong in my relationships or in my business and as soon as I get into that state being uh, feeling like a victim I tell myself well this is nothing compared what I ha what I overcame uh, this is nothing I have my life back I'm healthy and happy so now nothing can make me really distressed or uh, depressed or unhappy because 
life is so beautiful on the other side and I hope that every single person that's watching they will recover soon and also experience joy and positivity of life. Yes. Do you have any advice for people who are really, really hurting financially? And I know a lot of people don't feel that they can do absolutely anything because of the symptoms. I felt that way when I when I had mine. What would you tell somebody that says, you know, they feel like an absolute failure right now because they they can't provide for their family or they can't support in the way that they would like to and they, they want to be productive but they feel so down on themselves. What would you tell somebody like yeah. that right now? Well, I, I also felt the same way for several years so I know how it feels and it's only temporary. Maybe it's two years of your life but you have 70 more years so just have faith that you are able to recover and take one day at a time again find people that heal themselves and model what they did and your body will follow yeah now success tip let's say what is the number one thing that you hear from people that you think is the common denominator that keeps them stuck in their pattern of sickness what is the the number one behavioral trait? yeah number one number one thing is uh, being a victim victimized state people asking questions like why me why did it why did that happen to me what did I do wrong instead of being a kind of a warrior and saying you know what this happened to me and thank God you know I didn't get hit by a car I still have a chance to recover yeah. so what can I do today one step what what one step can I do today to help my body heal itself and it's just asking the right question and uh, stop being a victim yep and and sometimes it's hard I remember this when I when I finally bottomed out um, I, I played the victim very well and I I was really good at that character so what happened is when I was starting to after, right after the bankruptcy and then they came and they took my car away and and then I got kicked out of my place and I remember thinking, wow, I have nothing. I don't have any health. I don't have a car. I don't have any money. I don't have a house. I remember just crying and just bawling and thinking, I'm screwed. And I just want to tell you, even if you bottom out to that level, fast forward a few years from that point where I was at, and I was living higher than I've ever had in my entire existence. I had health back, I had a seven-figure business, and I was living a dream. So even if you're in the worst of all situations and it feels absolutely destitute, you could just be that far away from living the life of your dreams still. So never, never lose hope because it could be right yes. around the corner. That's great. I, I agree with your, the, your statement. Yeah, and you live it. And what's what's exciting is that I look at it as it was my training ground. I, I like to change the way you perceive the problem, and I couldn't do it while I was in it. I could do it today because I, I know now today if you change the way you look at a problem, the problem changes. And I look at it as it was my biggest strength-building um, experience in my life. I don't think I was that strong until I went through that experience, and it forced me to actually learn how to stand up for myself, to put myself first, to model only successful people, and to really guard my mind from negativity because those were the things that I really had to learn because those were the areas that were breaking me and all around in my life. That's why I never had any money. That's why I never had any good relationships. So all these behaviors, they had to go anyway. So this was almost like my meeting with destiny in a in like a seal navy seal boot camp of physical illness where it was either survive or die it's your choice and i was like wow here it is this is like game time i'm either going to win or i'm going to die so i was like i i have to win and that's yes. that's what i felt it, it, there was no option to fail it that's why money who cares honestly most self-made millionaires have one thing in common you know what that is katrina if they lose their money, they become a millionaire again. They bankrupt and they get rich all over yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. So who cares? Honestly, you know, you got to be wise with your money. You don't want to give it away to, for nothing. But 
if your health is in the line, if you have to choose between your health and your money, choose your health because without your health, you're going to lose your money anyway. So choose your health. Buy the right foods. Get the right mentors. And, you know, take a, take a chance on yourself. Believe in yourself and believe that the universe will give you the answers if you have faith. Yes, so true. Yeah. All right, so let's add on to this and let's say, hmm, what does it take to become a, a client of yours? What, what, what is it going to take for me to be a successful client of yours if I want to be a client? Well, a um, great question. <laughs> to be a successful client, actually, yeah, it requires a lot of commitment and uh, dedication. Um, first is, of course, commitment. So if a person is not committed to their health, nobody can help them. So if you go to the best doctor in the world, that doctor is not as interested in your health as yourself. So you must be absolutely committed and you must be willing to take actions. And um, mentor is there just to support you and guide you and encourage you when you have fears or if you feel disempowered. However, you are the person that you that will be doing the job. And uh, I, because I'm so busy with with running other businesses, I don't really want to waste my time on people that um, try all kinds of things and they say nothing works because it means they, don't, they didn't try everything. When they say nothing works, they tried maybe three, four, five uh, treatments and they gave up. So basically, a person has to be committed to their, their health, to taking actions and uh, being in a big warrior state versus victim and uh, also because you already spoke about advanced cell training I think it's amazing and it's crucial to also work in groups because you support each other when you're surrounded by uh, 10 20 people that are going through the same journey and they all encourage each other and you see the results when i saw when i heard results from people that were sick for 20 years and they report in 4 5 6 weeks their mm. symptoms went down 50% I knew, oh my gosh, I'm going to be well as well. So yeah. it's so important. And uh, I do encourage people to um, work with me in groups because it helps. I, I think it helps a lot for, to, you know, to change your mindset, to be empowered and encouraged by your community. And um, I do have uh, groups running every three months. It's a three-month process. And um, I think we'll post a link below for anybody who wants to see free online training and then decide for themselves if it's going to work for them or not, if they want to join. It's actually really inexpensive and uh, first training is absolutely free for people to test it out. I love that. I love that you do that with the groups. Uh, that is so so powerful. I read a book by, have you heard of Lise Rankin, uh, her book Mind Over Medicine? Yes. She talked yes. about how the, com the, the community, the environment, that <clears throat> the probability of getting well when you're in a, in a loving, supportive environment is so much higher. You know, And the probability of ever getting well is almost nothing when you're isolated and alone. And most people that are really ill like this, that the tendency is to want to isolate yourself. And then you start to become plagued with anxiety and depression and fear. And it just starts to snowball down. But the that doesn't work. I mean, that you're actually taking statistical odds and putting them against yourself in, in a very bad way. And, and the opposite is what is required to get yourself the odds in your favor to support you know, that's the epigenetics of healing, Dr. Bruce Lipton's work. The environment influences the DNA. And I think that was one of the biggest things that I learned in it, an advanced cell training, and, and you're incorporating it too, is having that community where everybody can empathize because they're all in the same boat and people are starting to get well. You start to build your faith and then your belief comes. Then your certainty comes. You start to gain some improvements. And then you start to say, you know what? I was bedridden two months ago and today... I'm actually starting to exercise a little bit again. You start to see your way back to norm normality again, and then it gets exciting, I think. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so in closing, um, I want to add one thing before we close out here, but 
if anybody wants, and you can you can offer this and post a link uh, for just the price of shipping, I'll send them a copy of my book, How I Broke the Spine of My Chronic Illness. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll give that away for anybody that wants it for free. And it talks about a lot of the things that were mentioned here, like the advanced cell training, some other things that I discovered that worked for me. Um, and then work with Katrina. I would do it. If I were in the situation, I'd be all in today. I would do everything we talked about here. Um, and that's what I want to end with. That's kind of what I want to close with. How about you, Katrina? What do you want to Thank tell Thank you about? so much, Matthew. Yeah. So I'm very curious about your book, and you said anybody can get it. So yeah. how do people, how do they reach out and get your book? Well, my website is www.rnadrops.com, and you can get a free ebook copy of it just for submitting to our newsletter. And then for a few dollars, you can just call us. We have an 888 number. And for a few dollars, just for shipping, you just give us a call and we'll send it in the mail to you. You can have a hard copy of it as well. And uh, yeah, just ask. Amazing. Yeah. Great. And I'm sure you will post the link below so people can just click and go to your website yeah. and read your book. We'll make it real easy. Yeah, you just click the button, order the book. And uh, yeah, that's all for me. I'm, Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Matthew. I really enjoyed this interview, and uh, thank you so much, everybody that were watching. And uh, I hope you have gained some faith and uh, encouragement that you will get well too. Yeah, and give Katrina a call. I did a couple of years ago. Katrina knows what she's talking about. Get yourself a coach. Get. A, I mean, not a mo forget coach. Coach is mentor. Get a mentor, right? Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.